and sorry about the background noise it's uh there's like thunder so this is like i mentioned before this is the first uh, geography colloquium and we will have four more this semester possibly uh more than that but we only aim for for five webby colloquiums this uh, this semester and each one will be talking about very specific topics in geography why are we interested in this uh, topic is because uh, especially for those of you who are taking courses as um, electives uh, um, you may be just taking that class and what one geography class uh, for your entire college education or graduate student education but uh, in geography where we are in this department we uh, we uh, discuss a little bit more than that right and uh, um, this is just one example of a topic that may at seem first not overtly geographic but later on we'll see a lot of connections but but just to give you a sense of what's going to happen for the other uh, uh, succeeding um, webinars, we're going to have someone um, who's going to talk about uh, uh, violence in the VPO um, film as uh, research methodology, uh, ecological sustainability in the Pacific, uh, indigenous peoples. So, uh, and then of course the present one that we have. So anyway, welcome to everyone. And there's, just to give you a sense, there's now 54 people here and I'm happy to see that, 55. Um, let me first introduce to you our speaker, uh, Professor uh, Emerson Lorenzo, graduated at the UP Diliman Department of Geography. Uh, he joined the Rockefeller Foundation Philippines based at the UP School of Economics as a researcher. Mm -hmm. He then became instructor of the then, uh, it was then called the Department of Geology and Geography here at UP Diliman where he completed his academic studies for Master of Science in Geography but was unable to finish his thesis following his transfer to Marina, which is uh, where he was administrator. Uh, it's called Maritime Industry Authority. While working with the Marina, he obtained his diploma in uh, professional shipping from the Norwegian Shipping Company, Academy, I'm sorry. Mr. Lorenzo became the administrator of Marina in 2010, became, becoming the only head of that agency who rose from the ranks, aside from becoming a career executive service officer. After 30 years of work experience in maritime policy and administration, he opted to retire from the government service in 2012. Since his retirement, he still keeps himself busy as consultant in various projects, uh, particularly the UN International Maritime Organization, JICA, Primex, and other consulting entities. And uh, he served as senior lecturer at the Department of Geography uh, from 2012 to 2016. And, uh, uh, also inviting him to um, uh, teach a special course next year when we finally teach our first ever Geography 198. So uh, I'm going to share the screen right now to the PowerPoint that's giving and then I'll give it to Professor uh, Emerson Lorenzo to um, um, start the lecture. Anytime you're ready, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph, for the introduction and also for giving me this opportunity to make this presentation. Am I, uh, is, is my audio clear? Yes, quite clear from where we are. Okay. okay. Uh, for this webinar session tonight, I will only be able to give a brief introduction to water transportation or shipping and uh, conclude briefly as well with a general overview on the geographic perspective in shipping, hence the caveat uh, in this uh, title slide. Next slide, please. Let me start with the principle that uh, the movement of people, commodities, and materials create a demand for transportation. Therefore, it is only when there is a demand for movement that invariably there is a resulting demand for transportation, which means that transportation as an economic service is a derived demand. 
Transportation may be done through the following modes, by land, by rail, by air, or by water. In some instances, the transport would involve a combination of a couple or several modes, and this is referred to as intermodal or multimodal transport. A very simple example of this would be some items we order from Lazada sourced from overseas, say China. The item is transported by air or water from the place of production in China to the Philippines, and then uh, Lazada Philippines will then deliver the item to the buyer by flood transport. So uh, let us now take a closer look at each of these modes of transport, focusing on the established advantages and disadvantages of each. For land transportation, it generally involves motorized carriers such as cars, buses, vans, trucks, including motorcycles and tricycles. Land transportation is equipped to handle commodities of medium to high unit value and quantities or volumes, including people, is smaller than that for rail transport. It is the most efficient mode for inter uh, short and intermediate distance calls. Next, next please. Next item. Uh, land transport also has the advantage for cargos requiring door-to-door -door transport, but becomes uneconomical for long hauls and for high volume and low value commodities. Going now to rail transportation, the conveyance used are trains, also referred to as mass movement carriers for both people and cargo. As a rule, Rail transportation has the advantage when handling large volumes over long hauls. It is thus economical and efficient for bulk traffic on intermediate and long hauls, usually involving 200 miles or 300 kilometers or more of distance. In general, it is not economical for short distance transport due to high terminal and overhead costs involved in its operation. But for passenger transport in heavily populated and congested urban areas, given the greater number and uh, at, fast, at a faster time of movement involved, it serves to offset such disadvantages and thereby makes it very economical. Unlike road transport, rail transport is not suitable for door-to-door -door distribution. Next slide, please. For air transportation, the conveyance used are airplanes of varying sizes designed for passenger and cargo carriers. Its primary advantage is speed, and it is most suitable for high unit value cargos. It involves high transport cost in terms of fare or freight, largely due to high overhead capital and high cost of uh, terminal operations. Next, please. For water transportation, the conveyance used are ships, thus the more common reference to this mode as shipping. By virtue of their construction, ships are capable of handling large and bulk, uh, bulky tonnages of goods of low unit value like lugs or lumber, gravel and sand, cement, grains such as rice or wheat, etc. Of course, in cases where land or rail transport is not available, as in the case of island to island movements, Shipping can also accommodate cargos more suitable for land or rail transport, such as sacks of rice, boxes of pomelos, crates of merchandise, livestock, fruits and vegetables, etc. The downside to shipping is that it is much slower than the other transport modes, 
and requires terminal facilities in the ports, as well as cargo handling equipment. Significantly, shipping is the dominant mode used in international trade, accounting for more than 90% of the goods carried in terms of weight or volume. Next slide, please. Let us now take a look at the situation of the various transportation modes in our country. For land transportation, it is extensively used in most of the islands on a regional, provincial, or interprovincial scale using passenger buses and trucks, or on a city or municipal scale using jeepneys, buses, and taxis, or on a localized scale using tricycles and motorcycles. All land transport conveyances are operated by private entities or individuals using roads, highways, and bridges constructed by the government or its contracted private entities. For rail transportation, we have the LRT and MRT for city operations and the PNR for intercity, municipal, and provincial operations. The PNR is owned and operated by the government through the Department of Transportation, while the MRT is a privately owned, uh, is privately owned under a BOT arrangement with the government, and the LRT is jointly operated by the government and a private corporation. As for air transportation, airplanes operate on a national or regional scale over selected areas of the country. They are operated by commercial companies. And uh, for water transportation, we have ships of varying sizes operating on a national and regional basis, while motor bankas are largely used for localized operations. All ships and motor bankas are operated by private individuals or companies. One important thing to note uh, is that transport services in our country, uh, just like that of communications related services, are considered as public utilities and are therefore regulated by the government in accordance with the public service law. Next slide, please. Of the various modes of transportation in our country, shipping or water transportation would have the greatest significance in the light of the following considerations. First, in view of the archipelagic configuration of the country, consisting of 7,641 islands, which ranks seventh worldwide, and involving 36,289 kilometers of coastline, which is fifth longest by country worldwide. The most viable means of linking all of these islands and reaching these coastlines for the transport of people and materials would be through shipping. Second, the extent of maritime coverage of our country's archipelago likewise underscore the importance of shipping in order to effectively manage and utilize 260,000 uh, square kilometers of base and coastal waters, 1,934,000 square kilometers of oceanic waters, and uh, 1,830 square kilometers of inland waters. Compare these areas with our country's land area of 300,000 square kilometers. Third, given the number of settlements of the country located along the coast, as of 2018, uh, there are about 25 cities and 822 municipalities along the coast, shipping would naturally become part of their sustained development. And finally, the significance of shipping to the country can also be seen from its performance, being responsible 
for the periods of 24.31 million metric tons of our domestic trade in 2016, 30.9 million domestic passengers also in 2016, and 147,300 million metric tons of cargoes in our foreign trade. Next slide, please. The role of shipping in our lives has often been not fully appreciated and recognized. But the reality, however, is practically most of the things we use or consume or the amenities we enjoy depend on their having been transported through ships before being manufactured and delivered to us. This is especially so in our country where shipping is the most economically viable and suitable mode of transport to connect our various island communities and economies. This is especially so in our country where shipping is the most economically viable and suitable mode of transport. Some examples of the role played by shipping in our country are the following. Efficient distribution on a national scale of basic and daily requirements such as food, clothing, manufactured products, power supply, communication amenities, and agricultural and industrial inputs as well as outputs. Relief and rescue operation in the aftermath of typhoons and flood is another important role of shipping, especially where roads are absent or become inaccessible. It is a source of livelihood and employment, as well as an area for investment in our economy. It provides the most economical and effective means for national integration of our country, be it in terms of physical, sociocultural, and cultural, socioeconomic and cultural integration. And lastly, it links the nation's economy and people to the global community. Next slide, please. Just to underscore the significant role played by shipping, not only in the context of the Philippine setting, but even worldwide, uh, I'd like to show you the excerpt of the speech of the UN Secretary General during the 2010 World World Maritime Day celebration, summarizing the value of shipping to world trade and development. To quote, ships transport more than 90% of the world trade safely, securely, and efficiently at a fraction of the environmental impact and cost of any other mode of bulk transportation. For most cargo, there is simply no viable alternative. And he goes on to say, they bring us the wheat that makes our daily bread, the gas and oil that warm our homes or propel our vehicles, and the gifts like appliances, furnitures, and materials we share with and enjoy with our families and friends. And he concludes saying, shipping and its seafarers are in effect the lubricant without which the engine of trade would simply grind to a halt. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Let us now take a closer look at the ships used for carriage and transport. First, ships can be categorized into general types based on their nature of utilization. Accordingly, we have the following major ship types. Merchant ships, which are used for commercial carriage of passengers and cargoes, fishing vessels used for transport of fishermen and their gears and equipment to fishing grounds and carriage of their fish cuts. Another major type are stationary and work vessels used for dredging, cable laying, and other marine works like coastal reclamation. Likewise included under this category, would be offshore drilling units, although most are now increasingly designed to be mobile instead of being stationary. 
Another category are spatial purpose ships, which include training ships, observation and research vessels, as well as pleasure crafts. Lastly, we have the naval or warships operated by the military, like those operated by the Philippine Navy here in our country. Of the foregoing major types of ships, it would be the merchant ships and to some extent fishing vessels, which would often be the focus of attention and discussion. Okay, so let us now take a look at the major types of merchant ships. Again, the categorization would be based on their principal utilization for carriers. Thus, we have uh, merchant ships designed for carriers of passengers, others for carriers of dry cargoes, and finally, those for the carriers of liquid cargoes. Under each major category would be more specific types of merchant ships. Uh, uh, yeah. For passenger carriers, there are the passenger ships, high-speed crafts and fast crafts, and cruise ships. Uh, uh, let's go to the uh, previous slide first. No, previous slide. Okay, thank you. Under dry cargo uh, carriers, we have the general cargo ships, container ships, bulk carriers, roll on, roll off, or roll of ships, car carriers, and even livestock carriers. Finally, for our liquid cargo carriers, we have the oil tankers, the chemical tankers, and the liquid. and the liquefied petroleum gas or LPG and liquefied natural gas or LNG tankers. Uh, LNG or the liquefied nat uh, natural gas would include uh, such hydrocarbon byproducts uh, in liquefied state like methane, ethane, propane, and butane. It may be essential to point out that not all of these vessel types are currently operating in the Philippines. The type of merchant vessels operating in our country is dependent on what type of goods or materials are being traded domestically. Uh, so for passengers, we have the passenger ships, we have also high-speed crafts and fast crafts, Cruise ships we do not have, although we allow foreign cruise ships to call on uh, various ports in the country. For dry cargoes, we have general cargo ships. We have also a, uh, a number of uh, container ships. We do not have bulk carriers. We have small Roro uh, ships, no car carriers. Livestock carrier, uh, it's not operating on a regular basis. For liquid cargos, we have oil tankers, chemical tankers, we do not have LPG and LNG tankers, we also do not have. For purposes of visualization and better appreciation, here are sample pictures of these merchant ship types. Next. For, uh, note that under passenger ships, Motor bankas are included, which is a very common mode of transport in most areas of the country. Ships designed for passenger carriages would be of varying sizes, with cruise ships being able to accommodate from 1,000 to 3,000 passengers, while high-speed crafts or fast crafts can have capacities of 100 to 500 passengers, and average sized motor bankers would be able to transport 10 to 30 passengers. A common feature of this type of ship would be the allocation of passenger accommodations, whether enclosed or open space on the deck. Next slide, please. For ships carrying dry cargoes, the important thing to note would be the variation in the configuration of the ship's deck in order to make it suitable for its intended cargo. General cargo ships 
would have relatively open decks to accommodate sacks, pallets, boxes, and even heavy equipment and machineries. A container ship would have its deck configured to properly and safely accommodate stacks and rows of containers. On the other hand, a bulk carrier would have decks that allow access to hatches or openings to several holds or storage compartments inside the hull of the ship to carry bulk cargoes like grains, coal, sand and gravel, etc. Roro ships are designed to have ramps on the bow or aft and for larger ones on the side of the ship to enable trucks, vans, and cars to enter the ship's hold. And of course, car carriers and livestock carriers would have decks designed to accommodate their intended cargo. There are other types of ships designed to carry dry cargoes of special nature, like reef reefer ships, which would have refrigerated holes or containers to carry easily perishable products. Next slide, please. The same principle of variation in deck configuration will apply to ships carrying liquid cargoes, but would be more technically sophisticated in view of the spatial or delicate nature of the cargo involved. Oil tankers would be basically similar to bulk carriers, except for the difference in the material and construction of the ship's hold or, sto or storage compartment. In the case of chemical tankers, the deck is so designed to accommodate the storage containing a particular chemical, such as alcohol, vegetable oil, or even alcoholic uh, products. For LPG tankers, the entire hold of the ship serves as the compartmentalized storage of liquefied petroleum gas with the gas pipes on deck as a dominant feature. LNG tankers are so constructed to make it safe and suitable to carry the delicate and volatile liquefied natural gas, hence their distinctive spherical tanks in their design. Next slide. To conclude, the fact that shipping fosters connectivity and spatial interaction between and among areas and places as a result of the dynamic, physical, socioeconomic, and cultural conditions obtaining in such places or areas, shipping provides a rich perspective for the geographic questions and concerns such as what are located where, why are things located where they are, what regional or spatial patterns or structures could be identified, even in the fields of location theory, as well as our uh, methodology in geography like site and situation analysis. Let me expound a bit on them further by posing the more specific questions or citing specific examples. Why are the places of origins and destinations of shipping routes located where they are? Why not in other places? Why are shipping routes concentrated in the Visayas area? Why are there few shipping routes in Northern Luzon, in the Eastern coast of the Philippines? Where would be the best places to locate and develop port terminals in the Northern Luzon area if shipping is to be promoted as an alternative mode of transport? And finally, if the local government of Bimali in Pangasinan, for example, want a terminal port developed there, will it be an economically viable and sustainable investment project based on the site and situation analysis of Bimali? There are clearly a lot of geographic questions that can be asked in shipping. And if anything, I hope that this brief introduction will serve to stimulate some of the participants to give it the attention 
that it deserves. Next slide. Thank you. That ends the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lorenzo. I may have to say your voice is really very even and uh, sounds like uh, I was talking to some friends. It sounds like uh, something I could hear in a spa. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. Not <laughs> Nina nervous, Oh no, not at all. <laughs> uh, I have a few questions here on chat, but they're mostly asking whether this will be uh, there will be access for the a recorded version of this. We will. Uh, this will be put on YouTube in our um, geography YouTube uh, channel and also in our website. But uh, it will it will be there for a period of time before we bring them down. So anyone else who would like to go back to some of the things that Professor Lorenzo mentioned could definitely go back to some of these things. So we'll make it available. At this point, I was wondering, let me just acknowledge the presence of the faculty of the Department of Geography, a few friends of Professor Lorenzo who are also here, and especially the students uh, from various geography classes who had to, uh, um, you know, like, <laughs> not have their dinner yet and listen to the, to the <laughs> or have it earlier or later. At this point, maybe we can ask, thank you very much, sir. Let me just say, thank you very yeah. much. We have, uh, we have, um, it's my pleasure. You really covered it like on the dot, you know, you, you finished at 7.32 and we started I would at have wanted to. I would have wanted to give a joke just like what I do in my classes, but uh, <laughs> given the time limit. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't. You can put them in. There are still people coming in, by the way. So um, at this point, if there are some questions uh, from the audience, we would like to um, hear them. Kung meron man. Iyan yung nakakatakot kasi kung walang question, either walang naintindihan or medyo malinaw. O baka hindi lang, ano, hindi lang kaagad na uh, yeah. In a process, pa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, so, are there any questions? You can also raise your hand if you um, want to. Makikita ko rin naman dito sa akin. Um, wala bang questions or any type of... Uh, provocations na pwedeng matanong kay... Oh, there's one question here. Thanks, um, Miko. Where yeah. do you see the future of sea transport in the coming years? Thank you, Miko, for that question. So basically, where do you see the future of sea transport uh, in, in, the in the near in the future? In the Philippines. Oh, in the yeah. Philippines? Maybe Philippines yeah. and international too, if you can Worldwide. give your insights in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, on, the, on the worldwide uh, scale, I think uh, there will be a lot of innovations uh, to be witnessed uh, in the world scene, uh, given uh, the dynamic uh, nature of the global economy. Uh, the, the ships that we have been accustomed to, like most of the things that I have presented, uh, might be changing in the, in the future. Uh, of course, the basic ones, like for oil, I think they will stay there. Uh, but the cruise ships, you probably uh, will have some uh, modifications introduced. But I think uh, uh, the, in, in the future, shipping will continue to play a very significant role in our foreign uh, trade, precisely because it is the most viable means of transport. Uh, and the most economical, I would say. Uh, now, in, in, in the Philippines, uh, uh, that's more of a complicated uh, situation. Uh, for, since the time I joined Marina, Marina was uh, established in 1972. I joined in 1982. And uh, uh, for the 30 years that I've been involved in Marina, there has been a very sluggish uh, or, or concrete uh, changes uh, in, in, in the shipping uh, scenery of the Philippines. And uh, <clears throat> if I, in fact, 
even for uh, matters like modernization, where you can see more uh, modern, newer vessels, uh, that uh, is something that has been a challenge. Although I'm glad to note that uh, uh, there has been significant uh, improvements in the aids of vessels for passengers as well as for cargo and liquid cargo uh, vessels. Now, uh, the uh, thing, however, to emphasize here is we cannot or no one can really predict the future of shipping without predicting also the future of our economy. Like I have uh, pointed out in the second slide, in the initial slide of this uh, presentation, uh, basically shipping is a derived demand. Uh, shipping will come in when there is a demand for the movement of a certain commodity. And to some extent, uh, the level of development of the economy would dictate the kind of products that are uh, traded uh, between and among our islands. Uh, hence, uh, if our economy develops uh, considerably, then we will also see the emergence of other types of ships that would cater to the uh, different cargos that will be traded in such a development uh, level of our economy. Uh, but uh, 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 may I also uh, mention that uh, there is a maritime industry development plan that has been the uh, formulated by the marina. Uh, it's a 10-year uh, development plan. And uh, in that uh, plan, uh, we would see uh, improvements uh, in uh, the kind of ships that we have in, here in our country. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, we expect to have in the next few years would be to attract more cruise ships to come in or even have some local investors operate cruise ships in the country. Uh, another uh, part of the plan is to also uh, uh, focus attention on developing the water transport in our inland waters. Uh, Pasig River for that matter, connecting to Laguna de Bay, but there are also other rivers in other parts of the country where you would be expecting also the uh, development of water transport. So I guess that would be my, my answer to the question. Uh, sir, we have four questions here for you and uh, mm -hmm. we might have this last, uh, if we have about 19 more minutes before we end at eight o'clock, might as well just ask them according to how they came into our chat box. Yeah. One of the questions okay. from Benedict asked this question, uh, I've been made interested about passenger ships. Are there any dedicated existing routes you're aware of that transports passengers intercontinentally? Okay. Uh, uh, do, uh, are you... Yeah, I, I it's a question. <laughs> I, I said, uh, okay. let, me, let me repeat okay. it again. Are there any dedicated yeah existing routes you're aware of that transports uh, uh, passengers intercontinentally? Mm -hmm. uh, most of the ships that transport passengers uh, intercontinentally would be the cross, cruise ships. Uh, unlike in, in, in the Philippines where you have the so-called liner passenger vessels, meaning they have regular uh, regular schedules, regular routes, uh, intercontinentally, uh, the only passenger ships that would have regular schedules, although it's not even uh, quite that fixed for, for a, a long time, uh, would be our cruise ships. So we have, like for example, in Singapore, they have the uh, uh, Star Cruises, uh, but uh, the coverage of Star Cruises uh, would only be here in Asia. Uh, so they, they would uh, involve getting to uh, 
areas in the Southeast Asian region, Japan, uh, Korea, and of course in other continents, uh, you would have also uh, the Carib Caribbean cruises, uh, and then you have also, I think uh, there's one in, based in Norway, there's also others in Japan. Intercontinental in the sense that uh, if, if the question refers to from, let's say, Southeast Asia to America, I am not aware of that, but uh, intercontinental in the sense that maybe in, in Asia and the Middle East, then there, there might be uh, some uh, cruise ships like that. Thank you, sir, for uh, that answer. May may I just uh, request that some of you please turn off your audio just to make sure that uh, we don't get as much interference as possible. Thank you. Uh, Angelica has this question. Uh, her, her dad works in a chemical tanker and uh, that's why it's a very personal, a personal talk for her for this one. I wanted to ask what are the negative effects in working in a chemical tanker, if there is any that you know of, of course. Mm, well, uh, my, my work exposure is in the administration side. I will have to uh, uh, say offhand that I've never been on board a chemical tanker. Uh, but from, from what I know, all of uh, our uh, specialized ships, including chemical tankers, uh, observe all the safety uh, and the uh, accident prevention uh, protocols that are prescribed by uh, the International Maritime Organization. Uh, the, the, the nature of uh, world shipping uh, for, for the information of the participants is such that uh, it's, it's also regulated in a sense. It's, it's a consensual regulation uh, among the countries uh, operating shipping by way of the International Maritime Organization. So the IMO, uh, for short, comes up with what we call conventions. So uh, like for example, when uh, the Titanic sank, they came up with the uh, SOLAS convention, safety of life at sea uh, convention, which prescribes uh, not only in the construction uh, of the, the passenger ship, but also in the manning, as well as operations of the ship. So uh, what I'm saying is, we have also conventions reg uh, prescribing safety of uh, chemical tankers. Uh, it's, uh, it, uh, the, the emphasis, however, of IMO is uh, more on uh, pollution prevention, oil, chemicals that spill on the sea, uh, which causes uh, damage to the environment. All of these are uh, prevented uh, by way of uh, regulations uh, through the conventions that uh, they adapt. Uh, if the question is referring to how safe is it to work in, in a chemical tanker, uh, uh, I think there is really not much danger to it because uh, in, in, a, in a chemical tanker, uh, most of uh, the equipment there would ensure uh, the safety of the crew and uh, even even in terms of health hazards, I think all of these are uh, really taken care of by the equipment provided on board the ship. So uh, no worries for uh, your father uh, because I think the ship itself, I, I assume this is a foreign owned uh, tank, uh, chemical tanker. So I, I guess uh, he's safe. Sir, I have, two, I have two questions here. I'm just going to combine them because they seem similar. So I'm just going to read a question posed by Dan and Miguel. Uh, pretty much yeah. the question is, uh, 
Uh, how do the disputes on West Philippine Sea affect the water transportation in the Philippines? That was Dan. And then for Miguel, he has this question. I'm interested to know if our maritime development plan is tied towards the regionalization process of ASEAN. You can just answer both or just one of them yeah. and peripherally do the others. Either way works. Uh, can you, uh, Joseph, can you yeah. repeat the question on the West Philippine Sea? Yeah, uh, it, it says here, how do the disputes on West Philippine Sea affect the water transportation and shipping in the Philippines? Uh, well, I guess the question here might be more related to uh, certain kinds of territorial claims. I know it's in a flux right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The Hague provided us with... Uh, a kind of, if I may call this temporary victory, because it says fortification should not be in that area from the Chinese, but yeah. um, it did not specifically say that it is ours necessarily. So I guess yeah. the question was more like, how do, oh, okay. Was that you, Dan, who asked that question? Um, anyway, so, so how do the disputes on West Philippine Sea affect the water transportation shipping in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if uh, unfortunately, for lack of time, I would have loved to show the map. Uh, uh, we can extend a little bit. I mean, I think there are some really wonderful questions here in the chat box. Uh, Only if you want to extend. Let, let me see. Can I sh uh, share screen? Yes, you can. Um, uh, I, I, I'll show... I, I, I can share my screen. I want to show the map of the Philippines showing the routes, uh, shipping routes. I, I can share my I'm, I'm sorry, say that again. Share? Ah, okay. So multiple participants can share simultaneously. Okay. I just did that. Okay. Uh, Pwede ka na makashare, sir, or... Yeah, I, I, I'll try to... Sa totoo lang, ngayon lang din ako. <laughs> Let me see. Baka, sir, offhand lang naman siguro. Uh, yeah, ga we ganito can, we na can lang. put uh, this in the age. Yeah, go ahead. Ganito na lang. Yung, uh, I think the, uh, the straightforward answer to that is if uh, at, given our existing shipping routes, domestic, uh, domestic shipping uh, routes, uh, West Philippine Sea is not part of the regular routes that we have. And as uh, we have uh, heard in the news, I think the only effect that the West Philippine Sea dispute would have would be on the fishing activities of uh, our fishermen. But the question probably is, does, it, does this dispute have an effect on the movement of uh, world shipping? Because, again, there is another map that would show that uh, the, the, the vicinity of the Philippines is uh, part of the uh, world shipping route, the major shipping route, and therefore, that would involve the West Philippine Sea. So, uh, yes, there is going to be a very uh, precarious effect of uh, the West uh, Philippine Sea dispute with respect to world shipping. And I guess most of uh, the uh, other countries, the shipping countries in particular, are, are, are worried of that uh, if ever uh, there is going to be uh, a worsening of the West Philippine Sea dispute. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question, sir? Uh, this was asked mm -hmm. by Miguel, but uh, would you know, at least if you are aware of this, if our maritime industry development plan is tied towards the regionalization process of ASEAN? Uh, not that I'm aware. Unfortunately, I... Uh, I'm not privy. I was part of the formulation as a consultant, uh, but uh, uh, 
uh, and my recollection of uh, what has been formulated for Marina is that uh, it, it has not really uh, taken or it, it did not really focus on the uh, ASEAN scenario. It's more of the development of uh, the shipping industry, the maritime industry for that matter. Because uh, when we talk of the maritime industry, which is the concern of Marina, uh, it does not only involve shipping. Uh, I, I'm looking at some of the questions here and there, are, there is a question on the shipbuilding side that is also part of uh, the sector that is being administered by Marina together with the maritime and power. And uh, well, uh, the scenario for uh, integration, uh, ASEAN integration, uh, in a way, there are already programs in Marina uh, which are also catering to uh, the ASEAN uh, plan, uh, integration, uh, integration plan. That's maybe that's all that I can. Might you uh, be interested? Yeah, yeah. There are Meron, the, the Sorry, Philippines ahead, is yeah. very active. Don't sa kon pala uh, as just as an afterthought, uh, because we are uh, very much involved in the ASEAN uh, uh, by way of the maritime uh, transport group, uh, transport working group. When I was connected with the marina, I have had several uh, opportunities to uh, participate in the meetings of uh, the Maritime Transport Working Group of the ASEAN. And uh, uh, as far as I know, there is the project called the ASEAN Connectivity, uh, which specifically involves uh, connectivity of the ASEAN uh, countries by way of shipping. Okay. Uh, there are a few other questions here. There's one that's uh, a little bit very specific, but I might as well just mm -hmm. ask them because it, it was uh, asked before. From, uh, from uh, uh, well, just an email, B, B. C. Poso uh, asked this question. Uh, are you aware of the proposed expansion of Port Irene in Cagayan? If yes, do you think it will be an economically viable or prolific project given its distance from Metro Manila? Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard of it, but uh, there has really not been any concrete proposals. And besides, uh, uh, any proposal for the development of Port Irene, uh, actually, uh, the area is uh, a, uh, an economic zone. Uh, and I doubt if that also falls under the uh, jurisdiction of the Philippine Ports Authority. Uh, marina is for the ships, but ports, which is the complementary uh, component of shipping, uh, is under a different government agency, which is the Philippine Ports Authority. And development of ports uh, over the country is under the jurisdiction of PPA, except uh, for private ports. There is uh, authority granted by PPA for the development of private ports, uh, but the development itself will be under the uh, jurisdiction of the private sector involved. For Port Irene, the reason why it has not really progressed as a port relative to the Philippine context uh, is because of the, again, the geography of uh, the place. Huh? Uh, uh, the, it's not really as protected as the developed ports that we have like Manila Bay, Davao. Uh, so it will really be very expensive to uh, develop Port Irene uh, to cater to uh, large volumes of uh, ships and ensure that uh, they are safe. Uh, in, 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 in calling in Port Irene. But if that is made technically feasible and viable, I think Port Irene is very crucial, not so much in relation to Marina, uh, Manila, sorry, but in relation to our foreign, uh, foreign trade. Uh, 
uh, because uh, the northern part of the Philippines is already close to uh, the uh, some of our trading partners like uh, uh, China, Japan, Korea, Hong Kong. So that would be the importance of Port Irene if ever that it, it is going to be developed. Okay. So there's a, I'm sorry if some of the questions I'll just have to ask uh, out of order, but uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Ricardo has this question here for you. Is there any plan to develop a shipbuilding or even ship repair facilities, given that our country is strategically located at the center surrounded by bodies of water? Yeah, we have a, uh, uh, we have a reasonably, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Uh, how will I put it? Uh, we have shipbuilding and ship repair facilities in the country. Uh, other than, uh, siguro yung mga iba dyan, uh, baka ang uh, naririnig lang si Hanjin. Uh, uh, but we, we also have another big one uh, catering to uh, ocean-going ships in, in Cebu uh, owned by a Japanese outfit Tunisia, uh, but Filipino owned and operated shipbuilding ship repairs we have uh, and some of them are uh, really catering to uh, the construction and repair of our domestic vessels and uh, uh, there, there has been uh, uh, for the information of the participants I, have, I spent four years as director of uh, the shipbuilding ship repair office of marina and in that period we were able to come up with a comprehensive development plan for uh, the shipbuilding and ship repair of the philippines and one of the uh, uh, premises of uh, that plan is the fact that we are so strategically located in so far as the world shipping route uh, routes are concerned, such that uh, we are missing the chance of capitalizing on that strategic location by developing our shipbuilding and ship repair uh, capability so that we could cater to this uh, world fleet that are passing through our area. And uh, that has been, well, uh, it's a 10-year development plan also that uh, we formulated uh, and basically there are a lot of problems coming in for uh, the development of uh, shipbuilding and ship repair in our country but uh, hopefully uh, there will be some progress to it uh, primarily uh, with uh, the, gov the support of government. So yes, there is, uh, the, the, the short answer to the question is yes, there are plans. Okay, sir. Uh, how are you doing so far with answering a few more questions? Are you still up no to it? No problem with me. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to make sure because uh, there are a lot of questions, very interesting ones. I wish I could really oh. copy them, but I can't. But here's one question from one of our grad students who's also an engineer by profession. Uh, the government plans to build inter-island bridges from Batangas to Mindoro, Iloilo and Guimaras. I believe mm -hmm. the idea is for the available transport, is for the available transportation, is for there be an available transportation even during typhoon and other safety and economic reasons. How will this affect the shipping industry in general? I guess with the inter-island thing, as it, will it compete, will it conflict or pretty much the same? Uh, from the theoretical standpoint, uh, it, it, there is, there's really not much of a competition. If it's an inter-island bridge connection, uh, land transport would still be more efficient, actually. Uh, like uh, if, if uh, you will recall the slides that I have presented and the advantages, disadvantages of its mode, short distance, uh, uh, transport is more suitable for land transport. Uh, shipping or water transport is more ideal for long distance, uh, bulk uh, carriages, low value. So if there are bridges constructed, 
Of course, uh, the, the overhead capital uh, exposure there is quite high. Uh, and of course, the maintenance, uh, depending on the nature of uh, the location of the, the bridges. The, the, the reason why a lot of uh, Roro ships uh, are being operated is simply because of the absence of these bridges connecting the islands. And uh, hence, uh, sometimes we, uh, you would uh, hear some people refer to Roro ships as our moving bridges because they are the ones that carry the, uh, the, the land transport uh, vehicles uh, from one island to another. So uh, not, not much, there's really not, well, it will affect Roro operation on isle, uh, uh, short island to island uh, uh, connectivity, but uh, not the Roro ships that are connecting uh, the rest of the other islands on a long, uh, longer uh, scale. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There's one question here from one of our students, uh, Jim Bagano, and uh, it's related to the fisher folk, sir, only if you can answer uh, this question. Um, many fisher folks also depend on local water uh, transport for additional income. Do you think mm -hmm. it's also important to improve our fishing and agriculture economy in order to provide this individual's opportunity to improve local water transport across the country? Uh, yes and no I and think, why I guess. <laughs> I think uh, what is, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I, I would like to uh, uh, second guess uh, what he is saying. Uh, my, mo most of us probably would have uh, encountered when we go to some resorts uh, like Puerto Galera or even uh, Burakai, uh, we often encounter uh, riding in, in a motor banka, which is primarily used for fishing, uh, but converted to transport passengers uh, because uh, there's more money in it, uh, sim uh, simply stated. And the, the thing is, uh, if, if that is the case, then it endangers the safety of the passengers because uh, there is a certain uh, certification or, uh, uh, well, there are certain requirements that should be uh, observed uh, in the construction as well as equipment on board uh, the banca, motor bancas, before they are allowed to carry passengers. And uh, this has really been a problem actually because uh, uh, a lot of areas uh, do do a uh, uh, fish uh, motor bankers do a dual purpose uh, operation. It can transport passengers. It can also be used for fishing. Uh, so, uh, I guess uh, yes, I agree. Uh, there, there should really be a program also uh, adapted by BIFAR that will enhance the productivity of fishing vessels uh, so that the, 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 they would be devoted exclusively for fishing operations rather than also go into passenger carriers. Okay. Thank you. Jim, is that okay with you? Or do you have follow-up questions? Mm -hmm. We can, yeah, we can, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was please, just if, 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 yeah, if, if they have follow-up questions, uh, that's okay. I, I, I like that very much. Yeah. There is another question from Amos, uh, or Amos, I'm sorry about that. Um, given that we live in an archipelago, water transport has been innovated. And given our economy, recent years presented more instances of shipping. With this increasing demand, <clears throat> excuse me, and consumption, should an overpopulation of ports and water transportation to be expected? Uh, major, I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I, I can not quite clear about the question. O I, over I think we'll, maybe Amos, do you want to just jump in and, and ask this question? I think the, the question really is, uh, 
um, given the fact that there's so many ships. So there's uh, he puts a, there's a quote here for overpopulation. Ah. So um, should an overpopulation of ports and water transportation be expected, considering there's been a lot of repairs, innovation, that sort of thing? Yeah, can, uh, uh, I, I, I appreciate a clarification. Kasi yeah, okay. medyo ngayon lang ako nakarinig ng overpopulation of the ports. Uh, crowding, overcrowding siguro. Or Baka it's, yun. I, it's in quotes, by the way, when, when, when overpopulation was written. So I don't think that uh -huh. was literal. Yeah, so yeah. overcrowding over, might be overcrowding. what was meant. Kasi in, in, in shipping parlance, meron din parang overpopulation when we talk of overtonaging. Barco naman yon. Uh, like uh, th there would be times, uh, depending on the state of the economy, na mas marami yung barco uh, na kailangan. Ay mas marami yung supply kaysa yung demand. So that is a state where we call it there is an overtonaging. Uh, pero kung sa ports, kasi meron din pwede na nagiging crowded yung port because of the ships that are calling there. Although that that, uh, that may not really be a common uh, uh, scenario in most of our ports. Uh, pero kung overcrowding of the port uh, facilities, uh, kaya medyo hindi ko, kasi I, I, I need to hear from uh, the one who asked the question ko ano specifically yung reference niya. Sorry ah, pero... Uh, hindi ko kasi ma-imagine ko ano yung pinanggagalingan nung yung yung, yeah. yung iniisip uh, situation. If Amos would like to say we can we can maybe rephrase the question and put it in the chat yeah. box again. Let's just move on with with another question about uh, uh, do you think climate change has an effect on the shipping company industry? I guess water uh, level uh, rises that sort of attendant problems that come with the climate, global climate crisis? It, it, uh, kasi ang, uh, what came to mind immediately is that uh, yung, yung traditional na uh, kwa namin concern noon sa marina is, uh, uh, is shipping contributing to climate change? But I think that is a different uh, topic altogether. Yes, I think climate change would affect shipping. Not so much, uh, kasi waters naman yan, kahit tumaas yung level o bumaba yung level, it will still float. Pero kung bumaba at uh, ito ay uh, sa mga ports magkaroon ng significant decline in the depth of the water, that means that uh, it, uh, the port will no longer be accessible. Pero kung increasing level ang pinag-uusapan dito, then it can have a positive effect on shipping in the sense that, uh, the, well, like for example, uh, siguro ang mas konkreto na isipin is there, are, there has been continuing efforts to tap the uh, Arctic uh, uh, Arctic area for additional navigation. Uh, although, of course, there is limitation in the sense that uh, you have uh, the ice, uh, you have uh, the situation there does not allow ships to, to, to navigate there uh, safely. But given climate change where there, will, there can be changes also in the condition of the Arctic, then that can significantly uh, affect uh, the the nature of uh, shipping. Okay. Thank you. Um, sir, how are we doing so far? There are maybe two more questions for you. Would that... No problem. No okay. problem. This is, a, this is a very rare occasion for me. I, I, I have been missing this, so uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, to maximize I... it. And I'm so glad that there are really some questions that were maybe related to their own research or their yes. own interest that, that I think is. Uh, so um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit, uh, I'm just still scrolling. There's a question here from Jay Concha. 
Uh, my question is about the presence of pirates and robbery mm. in Southeast Asia, particularly in areas of celibacy and waters mm. of Saba. How do the presence of piracy affect the shipping in the country? Ah, uh, yeah, they are very significant and effect the effect of piracy. Uh, in fact, uh, it uh, it has really necessitated the ASEAN to come up with joint uh, forces uh, in order to combat uh, piracy uh, in our area. And uh, well, uh, although this is more on a smaller scale compared to uh, the uh, thing that has been happening in uh, ship jacking, uh, but piracy is uh, has an effect. In fact, it has threatened to reduce the number of uh, ships that are passing through our area. Uh, that is why I guess it's not only an effort that uh, involves the ASEAN countries, the joint uh, task force of the ASEAN, but it has also necessitated other countries like Japan, Australia, uh, and even the U.S. to really assist in combating piracy in this area. Okay, I was I was also interested in that question because I don't know where I was interested about that before, especially sir in the one in Somalia. You know where where mm, I think there was the, even a Hollywood movie that was uh, someone could just type it in the chat box. I forget the title, but it has Tom Hanks in it. But but it was I think uh, um, what they were doing with with those types of people. Um, of course, it's a Hollywood film, so it criminalizes. Mm -hmm and uh, illegalizes some of those activities by the so-called pirates when in fact they may be fighting for their own water territorial uh, areas mm -hmm. you know but but uh, because of that um, they said that some of the areas that are known for piracy is exactly what what was asked this question earlier uh, the celibacy in waters of Saba yeah um, actually the, sir do you mind there is a Captain Phillips thank you Bennett and Mylene uh, and Seth. There is a follow-up question by, by, by Jay Concha who asked that question about piracy. Uh, are there any significant change in the routes because of the presence of piracy? Maybe, you know, changing it <clears throat> if you know that there's <clears throat> a so-called hotspot, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah like I mentioned, uh, there, uh, there has been some uh, shipping companies, uh, foreign shipping companies, that has been exploring alternative routes. The, the thing, however, is uh, the reason why uh, some other developed countries have uh, really come in to help us uh, combat piracy in this area is because right now it's still, well, the, the celibacy uh, offers is, is part of the uh, shortcut. Uh, if you're coming from uh, uh, the Middle East uh, and uh, pass, uh, going uh, to Australia rather than uh, go through the longer route, you might as well pass through uh, the Malacca Strait and then the Celebes Sea uh, because uh, that is the more economical uh, route as it is. So uh, the, the thing is, uh, some, most of the companies would still uh, be forced to take that route, but some have been really exploring. And in fact, if uh, it involves high cargo, they might as well uh, spend more in fuel and days, uh, navigation days, uh, to protect the cargo. So they, they would uh, avert uh, passing through the area uh, where there is piracy. So that is the effect that uh, piracy has on our world shipping. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, there are a few other questions, but I'm not sure whether to take them seriously. Uh, this was just sent to me personally. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it has nothing to do with it, sorry. Um, I, I guess one of the ways to finally put this to an end is also as uh, one of the earlier questions, 
uh, that was asked, uh, uh, actually, I think Miko's and a question earlier should have been the last one about the future, but there was this one question about, um, sorry, I'm just scrolling up. It's, uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, here it is. Um, I still can't see it, I'm sorry. Um, it's about the issues, water transportation issues or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Uh, I, wa I wonder if, what are the critical issues of water transportation in the Philippines? I guess that's a kind of a general thing. If you're going to enumerate maybe, you know, a couple or three. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, critical issues on shipping in the Philippines, I think, uh, most of us are quite aware that uh, there was uh, there were there was a period. Uh, thankfully, that was already uh, that was before my term as administrator. But the most of you would probably recall that there was a period when there were a lot of maritime accidents in 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 our country, uh, and it involved. Uh, the loss of uh, so many lives. And uh, that uh, really uh, projected to the national scene the concern for maritime safety, the safety of our ships. So that is a very basic issue. Uh, there has been uh, programs implemented in order to minimize that. So we have uh, several requirements imposed uh, that will comply. Uh, with the uh, safety uh, in the operation of ships. Uh, another issue probably that uh, needs to be uh, uh, pointed out to the participants is, uh, well, uh, it, 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 it uh, is also connected with the issue on safety, but it's on the modernization of our uh, ships. And uh, the, the, the reason why it is, uh, it is an issue is that uh, government has to balance uh, the program of modernization in tandem with the development of the other sectors of the maritime industry, like the PPA and the ports, uh, ports development, uh, shipbuilding uh, and ship repair. And uh, going to the third issue, uh, would be uh, that of maritime manpower. Uh, medyo ito nagkakaroon ng, hindi masyadong napapansin ng public, pero uh, ang nangyayari kasi is uh, the attraction uh, of uh, employment by ocean-going ships, foreign ships, is so high na ang mga natitira sa atin, yung mga medyo uh, hindi na qualified for the necessary uh, positions that are available here. Uh, what I mean here is that it also endangers the, the safety of uh, our shipping in the sense that uh, medyo hindi nagiging competitive yung uh, compensation packages ng mga seafarers natin dito sa domestic as compared to those in overseas. So, uh, I guess those would be the major issues that I can think of offhand. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, that concludes our, our webinar. There, there are wonderful questions. Let me just tell everyone that these are wonderful questions that you sent us. And uh, I've, been, I've been doing some private chats with some of my colleagues and some of them were, some of us were talking about how much we learn from this rather basic introduction that you're giving us about oh, water you. transportation. So there's a lot to unpack, to learn about a very important uh, transportation uh, modality in the Philippines being an archipelago and you know how much. So you know, on a personal note, although I won't go into details, I, it's a very personal thing for me too. I, uh, on a sad note, I lost a sister in one of the shipping oh. disasters ah. in 1999, yeah. And uh, of course, you know, it's uh, definitely tragic, but that's the nature yeah. of things, especially during the holiday season. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's, uh, that's, 
you know, it, I have I have a rather um, ambivalent feeling, you know, each time I, I see. I've never been in a ship since then. You know, I don't know. It's just something. Uh -huh. uh, in any case, uh, I tell you what, Joseph, if I may. Yes, uh, please. Yeah. If there are other, if there, if there are other questions, mm -hmm. uh, you could probably compile them and send them to me, and I'll try to yeah uh, uh, respond to them. Um, yes. Uh, so, sir, here's what I'm going to tell you and everyone else who is here. Uh, we're going to put this on YouTube and we will post the announcement in the Geography Facebook page as well as our own mm -hmm. updgeography.blogspot.com. You could, you could go there. And yeah. we'll just let everyone know about uh, the recording of this uh, uh, on YouTube. You know, so it will, it will be there as a kind of... Uh, a delayed telecast, if that makes sense. But um, and we're also kind of figuring this out. Uh, so I'm I'm so happy everyone is uh, <laughs> still here. We're still 69 people. We reached up to uh, 78 72. earlier. So mm -hmm. no, 78. 78 was like the ah, highest we ever okay. uh, had. Uh, so. So, uh, sir, thank you very much for your valuable insight. Uh, we will, uh, on behalf of the Department of Geography, uh, at some point we do, we will give you uh, a, um, a certificate <laughs> that looks like this. <laughs> Let me show you. Uh, here, here's what it is. But of Ooh. course, uh, Joseph Palis and Yanni Lopez will sign at the back, uh, down there. So, but thank you very much for, for, uh, for this, um, for so, can you just give me one quick thing? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. It happens. I'm sorry. I was very careful about making extraneous noise, and then the phone rang to say, you know, you know, you have to go home. So. Um, where was I? Oh, in the next webinars that we're having, I was telling everyone here who was here earlier, we're going to have someone who's going to speak about indigenous peoples and mappings mm. uh, from the Center of International Studies at BUP. Someone will talk from the University, from Queen Mary, University of London um, uh, on film and geography, but specifically the use of, ge of film as a research methodology. So, um, Jessica Jacobs, and then and then uh, in November we'll, we'll have two again. One of our colleagues is, but by the way, also here is going to talk about violence, uh, uh, labor, uh, labor, gendered labor, and uh, the call center. Very interesting stuff there. And then we end by I don't know which one comes first, but there's another talk given by by a um, a geographer from the universe from the East West Center at the University of Hawaii who's going to talk about ecological sustainability in the in Pacifica, pretty much. Uh, her areas are in the South Pacific, but she's based in Hawaii. And um, uh, yeah, so that's something, hopefully, that might interest you. And we may have one more yeah. person who's going to come. So um, on behalf of the Department of Geography, sir, uh, Professor Emerson Lorenzo, we thank you for that wonderful, insightful, and um, a thorough investigation of issues in water transportation and shipping. And those questions were just as amazing. So thank you yeah, for everyone else. Uh, yeah, for, for giving that, those questions. And, and like what uh, Professor uh, Lorenzo suggested, I'm going to compile these questions and send it to him. And uh, maybe there's a way that we could put that on YouTube, a kind of answering all the other questions in text form towards there so that they could see some of this. But this is uh, since it's recorded. So are there any more uh, things anyone else would like to say um, before we finally put this to an end? 8.26, oh my God, we're really under that. Thank you, <laughs> thank you everyone else for coming. <laughs> and thank you again, sir. So uh, yeah, it's, have, a yes, it's a pleasure. Yes, have, have a good evening, everyone. Uh, and yeah. uh, we'll definitely let Thank you know sir. about the next one. Yes, sir, Jake. And we will You're definitely welcome. let everyone else uh, um, know about the upcoming ones in, in early October. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>